Hello and welcome to Ingression Prime, the only series that gives you the best tips, tricks, and information on the game that we all love, and soon you will too, Ingress Prime. I'm your highly experienced instructor, Incredible Hulk, aka Colin Williams. Now, if you've never played Ingress or Prime, or if you're still in the first few levels, we're going to give you the most comprehensive coverage anywhere with all the basic information that you need to play Ingress Prime like a pro. However, Ingress is like chess. So today we'll cover the rules, but the strategy is covered in the rest of the Ingression series. So make sure to check those out after watching the 100 series of videos. And check the video description just in case a game update changes something, uh, happens all the time, and we'll update down there with the most accurate information possible. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started. So first off, what exactly is Ingress? Well, Ingress is a real-world capture the flag slash king of the hill created by Niantic. It's the original AR app from the same guys who made Pokemon Go. But Ingress is more complex. And depending on who you ask, more fun. Ingress is geocaching turned into a fun social experience with a lot of players and potential friends. And Prime is the latest version of Ingress that updates graphics and user interface while keeping the format and community that have been running since 2012. And it's a big community. There's up to hundreds of thousands of active players every month battling over places known as portals. Portals are real-world locations centered around art, pieces of history, adventure attractions, and hidden local gems in your own community. There's millions of portals all around the world, from the Antarctic to the Gobi Desert, and even in your local city. To play, all you need is a sense of adventure, an Android 4.4 or iOS 10 and above device with an internet connection and GPS. Now when you begin Ingress, you'll be presented with two team or faction choices. The Resistance, who seek to battle the forces that are attempting to use exotic matter to enslave humanity, and the Enlightened, who seek to harness the power of exotic matter to evolve mankind to a higher level. Basically. There's an outside force known as shapers that are attempting to influence our world. The enlightened think they're good and the resistance think that they're bad. Now, neither team has any in-app advantage. All the weapons are exactly the same on both sides. The only advantage a faction can have is in the skill and dedication of its players. And I won't tell you which faction to choose, but I will suggest that you research each faction before you make your personal choice. But once you've downloaded the app and you've picked your faction, it's time to play. And first thing up, Ingress is a real world app. So to move in the app, you gotta move in the real world. And you can walk, you can bike, you can dog sled, you can have someone drive you. Uh, you could even hook a wagon up to five cats but you've got to move. Uh, there is a speed limit though for safety. So if you go above 60 kilometers per hour or above 35 miles per hour, Ingress won't register your actions until your average speed falls below 60 kilometers per hour since your last successful action. Now to know where you're going, your phone uses an overlay of Google Maps to show you the Ingress world. It augments reality. You can see your location and any portals within your nearby vicinity. You can also rotate the map with your fingers. You can zoom in and out by pinching the screen with two fingers or by double tapping on the screen and then sliding your finger. But you can't move your scanner to see portals farther away. And you can't see other players in your scanner. So if you want to see things further away, you need to go there. If you want to see other people, then you have to meet them. You get out there. It's time to move. But how does that scanner work? Well, let's break it down. 
The area in the top is information about you. On the left side, that outer ring is your XM bar. It shows how much energy you have to complete certain actions. Now, if you run out, you can collect those blue dots on the ground, called exotic matter or XM. You can also use an item called a power cube. You'll access the power cubes by tapping on that little plus icon below your XM bar. The inner ring shows your progress to the next level. And at the very center, the emblem is your agent avatar. You can change that by accessing your profile, which you'll get to by tapping on the avatar. Now on the right side is the agent name, your current action points or experience, and your level. Now you'll gain experience or AP by destroying, taking over, linking together portals and resonators. If you tap on your agent name, that's another way that you can actually access your profile to see all of your stats and how you're doing. Below your name is the activities area with live updates of what people are up to near you. If you click on it, it'll take you to the communication area. That comms area will show you nearby activities anywhere from five all the way up to a thousand kilometers away, including alerts of when someone's attacking your stuff. You can also use comms to send messages to other players in both factions or just your faction. You'll send it by typing their agent name with the at symbol before it, or by pressing on their name currently in comms and selecting send message. A side note about comms though, the comm is not a secure method of communicating. Uh, so avoid discussing potentially sensitive information like you know, portals you're going to attack, or how much you cried when you watched The Notebook, because then people might make fun of you. Anyways, back to Ingress. Uh, on the main screen, in the center is an arrow with a circle around it. That arrow is you, and the circle is your action range. You can only directly interact with portals and items inside that circle, so you'll have to get up and move until a portal is in that circle. In the bottom lower left area of the scanner, we can see how many items and portal keys are in your inventory. Now you can only hold 2,000 items, which may sound like a lot, but it can fill up real fast, so you'll want to keep an eye on that. Bottom right of the scanner will show you the last alert that you received, and that's another area that you can tap on in order to be able to jump into your comms. Bottom middle is the circle that will pull up your menus, which we'll cover in a bit. But now that you know what you're looking at, what do you do once you get to a portal? Well, the four main points of ingress are to destroy your enemy's control of portals, capture portals, link portals together, and create what are known as fields. This is how you gain that AP, or experience, and level up. But Ingress prefers that you build things up, so you get more experience points from capturing and building actions than you get from destroying actions. But to capture a portal, it does need to be gray or neutral, and not owned by either team. If the portal is the opposite color, you can turn it gray by attacking it. Now if the portal is already your faction's color, you can't capture it, but you could possibly help by upgrading or adding more things to the portal. But in order to do actions like attacking, capturing, or upgrading portals, you'll need supplies. And to get those items, you'll do what's known as hacking a portal. And don't worry, you don't need to be a member of Anonymous or swallow pills from a strange burned fish man to hack. Just click on a portal and then click the hack button. That's simple. When you hack, you'll receive a random assortment of between 0 and 10 items, either within 1 to 2 levels of the portal, or if the portal is a higher level than you, within 1 to 2 levels of your current level. Now you tend to get the most items from friendly portals that are the same faction. You'll usually get less items from gray and enemy portals, and enemy portals might even attack you and drain XM when you hack them. 
but you'll get 100 action points from hacking an enemy portal, so it kind of makes up for it. Now the items that you'll actually get from hacking include uh, resonators, which you use to claim portals, shields, force amps, and turrets, which you use to defend portals, keys, which lets you remotely recharge and link two portals together, power cubes, which can refill that XM bar when you run out of energy, media to update you on events in ingress, portal modifiers like heat sinks and multi-hacks, and most importantly, XMPs and ultra strikes, which are weapons. Now, XMPs are wide burst weapons, which attack a large area but have a receding ripple effect. So the farther you are from what you're attacking, the weaker your attack. Whereas Ultra Strikes are concentrated attacks for when you're standing right on top of a portal or resonator. In order to detonate any of these weapons, just press that Center Circle Ops button, then select Attack. A sliding carousel with all of your weapons will pop up. And to get an extra boost on the weapon's attack, instead of just tapping the fire button, hold it down. A ring will form around you and shrink in with the weapon falling down in a beam of light. The closer the ring is when you let go, the stronger the attack for up to a 20% bonus on damage. But if you don't let go, the fire ring will reset to its widest point, back to a 0% bonus. Good news, it just starts reclosing back in again, giving you another shot. Now, you can only use items at or below your level. So when you're first starting, you may have stronger weapons you can't use yet. And there's a few special weapons called uh, Adas and Jarvises that are used differently. And we'll cover that in future 100 series episode. But the great news is, no matter the level, your attacks only hurt enemy portals, so you don't have to worry about damaging any of your team's portals while you just go blast away and have some fun. But once you've killed a portal and turned it neutral, you'll need to take it over, and you'll do that by deploying resonators once it is turned gray. Resonators are those things that look like Shui equestrian face armor from 2055. Uh, and they're like batteries that power the portals. And just like weapons, they have levels. And you can't deploy resonators that are a higher level than you. Now to claim a portal, you must deploy at least one resonator. But to complete a portal and make it linkable to other portals, you'll need to fill all eight of the resonator slots. Now to deploy a resonator, just press on Deploy from the portal screen select the level of the resonator, then click Deploy. If you want a resonator in a certain slot, just click on the open slot before you hit Deploy. Now, even if a portal has all of its slots filled, you can still help out by upgrading resonators. So if you have a resonator of a higher level than one on the portal, just click on the resonator slot that you want to upgrade, then deploy a higher level resonator. Upgrading makes the portal stronger. However, it doesn't give you as much AP, aka experience, as if you do a fresh deploy. But resonators also have limits when it comes to how many a single person can deploy on a single portal. So although you can deploy eight level one resonators on a portal for levels two, three, and four resonators, it will only let you deploy four of each level. So by yourself, you can put four twos and four threes, but no more than four of any particular level. And when you hit the higher levels, it drops even more. Only two of each for fives and sixes, and only one of each for sevens and eights. This is important because the level of a portal is determined by the resonators on it. To calculate a portal level, you add up the levels of each resonator of the portal then divide by eight and round down. So if a portal has seven level twos and one level one, it'll still only be a level one portal since the numbers round down. This also means that due to resonator limits, the strongest portal a single player can make is level five, 
which means when you get to the higher levels, if you want lots of higher level gear, you have to work with other players. And that's one of the top reasons Ingress is such a social game. But now that you know how to capture portals in Ingress, but there is far more to it than just that. You can also link portals together for more points, uh, make them more useful by modifying them, which we'll cover next in Ingress Prime 102. Along with how to keep your portals safe from attack, what limits there are on hacking portals, and how to get around those limits for more weapons and other items. And Ingression is more than just a beginner series. We have tons of guides and pro tips to help you become one of the best players in no time at all. So just click that subscribe button to make sure that you are always getting updated on the latest videos and tips. Otherwise, in the meantime, feel free to explore the playlist, learn more after, of course, you've checked out Prime 102 and the rest of the 100 series. Then go out there, play, deploy, destroy, and enjoy.